giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. Alright, so let's get back into the top five. Uh, and Mike is going to talk about one of my favorite teams, Team 1114. <laughs> From St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada, and Governor Simcoe Secondary School at Symbotics, an overall record of 66, 4, and 1. They were semifinalists on the Curie Division. Uh, heavy favorites on the Curie Division after wins at Humber College, Windsor, Essex, and the um, a Provincial Championship. Uh, the Simbots would take the number one seed with a 3.5 ranking score average. Um, edging out the number two, 27, 67 by 33 cargo points. As we all suspected, uh, they would take uh, OP Robotics, and after um, 117 and 127 point wins in the quarterfinals, they would tie, um, but take the L in um, semifinal one, and would uh, take match two by seven points, and then would lose in match three by less than ten. So just a heartbreaker for 11-14. Like we said, you could just see, I mean, you kind of see it on that match video too. Just, um, just the the defeat. Um, on the red alliance there uh, one of their they just really watch them kind of just really struggle through defense um, really placing only i don't know tyler if you you know like a game piece every 15 20 seconds or something through um through a heavy defense at times um yeah i, I didn't i didn't time i don't know but i mean yeah, actually I they, they had some very they had some very heavy defense against them um and at some point when they got to the semis, I mean, 1073 did play phenomenal defense against them. Yeah. And then they were able to get, like, a double climb going um, in in the playoffs there. But uh, I think uh, 107, Team 107, they would uh, they got up, and then uh, they did that kind of flip up. And then 111-14 went to go up, kind of knocked them off, and just really heartbreaking fashion the way that that match ended. But a, a great, great, great robot from 11 14 uh, just so dominant through um, just so many different um, competitions this year and just continued it and just uh, had some unfortunate luck here on the Curie Division in Detroit. Yeah, I almost felt as bad uh, when 11 14 got eliminated as when we got eliminated. I mean, it was just, I just for a long time, I guess more most recently since 2016, since they were so close. Um, I just need 20 feet to six to win a world championship. It's something that I think their, their team deserves and they've worked for. And I thought this was the year. Uh, so to watch them go out with 11, 14 was, uh, especially hard, but it is what it is. That's why they make you play all the matches, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So moving on to our fourth ranked team, it's going to be team 254 from San Jose, California, Bellarmine college prep. It's the cheesy poos 51, four and one. And we're the winners of the train division and we're world finalists. Another incredible robot that many in the, in the FRC community uh, thought maybe lacked a little poofiness, but they showed in Houston they were every bit as good as they played to the number one seed in Turing and then won the division in six, uh, in six matches. They went undefeated during the Ron Robin and pushed the finals before the World Championship to three, falling just short. So a great season for 254, and uh, I guess you're just not allowed to lose four matches in a season or everyone thinks you're bad. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, so we got to do it behind the bumpers with them. Um, make sure you check that out on YouTube as well if you haven't already. And just kind of hearing about their uh, design iteration this year and taking off kind of the climb, putting on a suction climber, uh, and then adapting since they did that. And then we took off like the bottom roller on their robot. And uh, just seeing this up close, man, 254 just has a beautiful machine. And it was uh, so great um, being asked by them to come do it behind the bumpers. I think that was really awesome. Hello. 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 <laughs> For sure. Hi. Want to oh, okay, who's doing this one? <laughs> oh, um, go ahead. I'll let you do it. All right. So, <laughs> so our third ring team is Team One Forty Eight from Greenville, Texas. Greenville High School. It's the Robo Wranglers. Overall record of sixty-six and ten. They were the winners of the Robling Division in Houston. The endlessly iterating Wranglers continued. Uh, cranking on their bot hard after their initial reveal in first district appearance. They made their game piece scoring faster and their climb more reliable, eventually adding a double climber that forked under a partner uh, robot in time for the district championship. The double climber made a huge difference for them and helped carry them to the inaugural district championship and rolling wins. An epic four banner season and impressive quality award win at the Houston championship. So another great season uh, for 148 and capturing that inaugural first district championship and another trip to Einstein. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, it was fun watching them in Houston. Um, we made the clips of the week last week with the JVN, like cleaning off the glass. That was pretty fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is a good one. Classic. <laughs> Classic. 
<laughs> and it's a classic too because it's like the other side of the glass, you know. So it's like yeah. you can't clean it. But just a look of disappointment on his face, like when you yeah. the glass. I'd like, I yeah. mean, it's obviously very, very scripted uh, on his end, but it, I think yeah. he played it pretty well. Who knew JBN could be such a good actor? Yeah, <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, all the dramas in the two spot, uh, kind of. <laughs> uh, Plus, he watched gonna... previous shows. That's right. <laughs> and Mike's going to talk about Team Sixteen Seventy Eight. From Davis, California, and Davis Senior High School, it's the Citrus Circuits, an overall record of 62-10. and 10. They were the winners of the Carver Division in Houston. So three regional wins and a Chairman's Award for 1678, which was uh, Central Valley, Sacramento, Aerospace Valley. Um, they played on the Carver Division two weeks ago and ranked third with a 3.0 ranking score average. They formed their own, their own alliance, would be uh, number six, two, and five to take the division win. Uh, so we talked a little last week, just kind of lots of trouble I'm an Einstein. Um, I'm pretty sure they started 0 and 3, but then would come back um, late. A, a late surge just didn't really kind of roll over and give up, um, but would end up taking third um, out of six in the round robin. Uh, just an incredible seven year streak making it to Einstein, which is just insane. So another incredible year. Um, uh, a few a few troubles for them um, that you would never you know you would never suspect just because of continuing how well they did. Uh, we talked a little bit last week, I think, in the Houston recap. Just they had to, like, I think, redo a uh, big chunk of their electronics board. Uh, but just a team that uh, fights through adversity. And uh, um, just another amazing, amazing season for 1678. And then lastly, um, Justin's going to talk about team 1323. From Madera, California, Madera High School, it's Madtown Robotics. 51 wins, only five losses. We're winners of the Newton Division and 2019 Champions of the World. 13-23 won every event they attended. Finally had a breakout year, and it was awesome to talk about and follow them all season long. They were the number two seed on Newton and were scooped up by 973. And along with 50-26, 42-01, would go on to... Um, we are going on the Robin, going 4-1, and one, winning the deciding third match in the finals uh, to take the World Championship. So congrats on an incredible season and the number one team in uh, the 2019 Top 25, 13-23, Madtown Robotics. Yeah. Mad, Madtown, I mean, absolutely crazy this year, right? I mean, talk about coming out of their shell in the last couple of years and just uh, what a phenomenal robot. To me, uh, you know, 254 had a great robot this year, but I think you know, most people compare this year's 13-23 to last year's 254. I think that's a very uh, uh, good comparison to have for that because absolutely a dominant machine. Did lose a couple matches, right? But at the same standpoint, I think the overall individual machine, 1323, just absolutely incredible. Oh, man, yeah. Yeah. Um, Just real quick before we wrap here, guys, um, Mm -hmm. I just want to talk about why we typically do not do a uh, post-championship poll because I know a lot of people who are I think newer people in chat who don't watch our show uh, as often are, are asking I, and you guys can correct me on a couple things but two things to me come to mind is one is that most likely it's going to be insanely Detroit biased because Detroit just happened and mm-hmm. even if people don't think it is I would be very surprised that there's not more bias towards Detroit because of that so I don't really know how we go about doing a good one I mean, there's bias no matter what, right? I mean, no matter when we do the poll, there's going to be bias. And yeah. the other reason is is that we we already do hand out the stickers prior to championships of teams. So I, I guess we could do another one for things, or we can just talk about where they were, and you can mention if they think they're higher or lower. So I, I don't know if there's the right answer for something like that or which way we go, but what are your guys' thoughts? I, I, I We always we, – we talked about – we've talked about it for years. And yeah. We always felt like – you know, everyone competes under the same circumstances for the most part, right? We have regionals, we have districts, we have district championships. We kind of let the play, because it's mostly even, um, let that play dictate the final rankings and then let the let the let where the chips fall where they may at the championship. Um, that's kind of the reason why we've done robot stickers based on the pre-championship voting, all that stuff. I just think it's a lot more equitable to do it that way. Um, plus, I think, Mike, I can't remember if we ever did a post-champs one, but we also had some difficulty, and then the story might be different now. We also had some difficulty getting a lot of people to vote for, um, getting a lot of voters post-championship. Post like champs, a lot of people kind of yeah. check out, and they say, you know, we're kind of done. And that might not necessarily be the case anymore, um, but I always felt like, you know, let the list stand. We all, you know, all teams, doesn't matter um, where you were, we all just went through the same thing. Districts, district championship, regionals, we were all on the same playing field. These were the rankings, and then whatever happens at champs happens at champs. 
Yeah, I think for all those reasons that you guys just said, um, and then whatever it may be, like, you know, whatever happens at champs, like, you get, like, if you won your division, you won championship, like, that is your prize. Like, you, that that's, you know, you won that. That's that's what it is. Like, that's what you can, that's what you can be happy with. And there's, we've had years, too, where there was a top 25 team that did, like, was on the top, like, the pre-champs top 25 that did not qualify for championships and or did not go to championships. So, um, you know, like they, you know, so they weren't eligible. So there's all those reasons. And then, you know, a couple more um, internal ones too, I think. Uh, but yeah, I think that's, that's kind of covers where we're coming from. And, and, you know, we're always open to make changes in future years. Part of, part of what we do on fun is uh, to iterate and do what in, in general we as hosts feel is best and what you as the community feels best. So we'd love to hear your feedback. Let us know in discord uh, and we can always talk about it. Right. Um, who, who knows what we're going to do for the future, but that's why we do it the way we do it right now. Yeah. So very cool. Uh, that's going to wrap up uh, the top 25 for the year, everybody. What a fantastic uh, 2019 season. Yeah, and just can't thank everyone enough for voting. The voting, <laughs> the support that we had this year was absolutely incredible. Um, we broke records, felt like week after week, Tower was saying yeah. we, you know, it was a record uh, yeah. number of voters, record number of voters. So uh, it was awesome. Uh, and don't forget, while well, the main FRC season is over, we'll still be here every Tuesday live in the air, providing you some awesome shows, interviews, insight, uh, and just to hang out. So um, the fun's going to keep rolling here on fun. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> So um, thank you to everyone who has watched. Uh, if you want more first robotics in your life and like what we do, all, we, all that we ask um, you to do is just let others know about the show um, and our Discord and all of the content that we provide uh, and is a place to go for more FRC in your lives and FTC um, on our other shows. So if you got a few bucks uh, to share, we really appreciate it. Um, and sincerely we do as it helps us uh, create more shows and honestly – Let's us know that you value our work. But if not, we totally understand and are delighted to have you on board regardless. And don't forget, over 1,700 people are now in our ever-growing fun Discord. Uh, so if you haven't been a part of that yet, uh, check out the Discord. Check us out under oh. App First Updates on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And we will, by the way, have uh, the full, uh, the top 40, I should say, FRC top 25 list posted from this season, uh, from the pre-champs uh, voting uh, up in our Discord first, and then we'll have it on Chief Delphi. And then uh, if you're interested in where specific teams landed, we can answer those questions for you either in our Discord or on Chief Delphi. Uh, don't forget, we do have an app, uh, an Alexa app. Uh, under first updates now. So if you say Alexa, uh, open first updates now, it should bring you an app and it lets you have access to the Blue Lines uh, API. So you can ask questions to the Blue Lines via uh, voice chat. Uh, with, that self, uh, with that said, on behalf of uh, myself, Mike, Justin, and of course our producer behind the scenes, uh, Nick, uh, working so hard to make sure this happens. I'd like to thank you for tuning in. Guys, thank you for an incredible 2019 season. Uh, just as a side note for us, if you didn't see our Discord, uh, we have uh, doubled our viewership, and it's only been four months in from last year. Uh, so, insane. and that it's because of you guys, right? You guys are out there being advocates for fun, letting people know what's going on for it. Just please tell more people about what's going on for it. Changes are in store for first updates now as we go into entering year five already. Um, crazy to think about. Uh, but we put our heart and soul into this. We hope you appreciate that, and we know many of you do. So, thank you so much. Uh, for that, uh, I think last year we had about 360,000 views. We were over 660,000 already, and that's just on Twitch and YouTube. That does include all mm -hmm. of our social media and everything else that's grown, and that's because of you guys, uh, guys and girls, reaching out, uh, just letting people know what we do, and that, that means the world to us, uh, and that validates our hard effort that we put in. So thank you mm -hmm. so much. Uh, Off-season changes are coming in fun. Uh, we're going to be experimenting with new weird stuff. I'll tell you that. Uh, making some host changes as well, too, as we go through. Uh, so that's our time to try stuff. We'd love to hear your feedback. Stick around with us once again every Tuesday uh, for FRC. And sometimes just, you know, we'll play Jackbox and stuff like that. And then at least uh, one time a month on Wednesdays for FTC, maybe twice a month. So with that said, uh, good night, everybody. Uh, can't wait to see you all during the off-season. And yeah, we'll see you next sure. time on First Updates Now. Talk to you then. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.